Hi, and welcome to my wonderful knitting life. My name is Margaret. I'm primarily a knitter, although I'm also a crocheter, a knitter, I sew, uh, I'm a teacher, a mother, and my goodness, there's a lot of other things, a dog owner, a cat owner, uh, I enjoy traveling. Um, but this is my channel where I mostly talk about knitting and a few other of my crafty adventures. I am from Quebec, Canada. I live on the northeast uh, shore of the St. Lawrence, which is uh, very close to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, in fact, I am only four blocks from saltwater, so I am very lucky to have a picturesque place to live. Um, I also am originally from Ontario, Canada, and I just uh, came back from our March break. I decided to go and visit my family. And I don't usually do that for March break because up here, the winter is very harsh normally, very, very cold and enormous amounts of snow. So with there being just one highway out of here, it can be extremely difficult to travel at this time of year. But we have had a very bizarre and very warm uh, winter this year. So I decided I would go for a little trip and it was really wonderful. Uh, I managed to have a day out downhill skiing, um, have a lunch with some knitting friends, which was glorious. And then unfortunately I got sick for the last part of the trip and I'm still battling a bit of a sinus ear congestion issue. But this too shall pass. So it is Sunday uh, afternoon. We have just changed the clocks. So I thought I would take the opportunity to just sit down and do a little bit of a uh, update to my channel. I put up my very first short video and it was extremely short. Uh, just a little video of me using what is called a circular sock machine or a CSM. I bought one about two years ago, although it did take about six months to be shipped um, to me. And that uh, item came from a company in the United States called um, Erlbacher Gearhart. I always have to think about that one before I say it. Um, it's one of about four or five large companies in the world that make circular sock machines. They make very beautiful sock machines. These machines are machines that are going to stand the test of time. They're going to last over a hundred years. And their earlier versions actually have lasted that long. So it was, it was a purchase that was definitely um, affected by uh, the passing of my mother, but it was also something that I was really curious about. I'd been following for quite some time and I'm really happy that I made the leap. I have an awful lot more learning to do with uh, this machine. I haven't had enough time to sit down and really learn all the ins and the outs of what this machine can do. And there's definitely a lot that it can do. It's not just about socks, but that is primarily its function. And while I was in Ottawa, I had a little bit of time uh, to sit down and make some sock tubes. So these tubes are very, very simple to make on a sock machine. Apart from getting your gauge correctly, um, which would be uh, the first thing that you want to get done, um, but it's quick and simple and that was really where my head was at over the break. Uh, so before I actually show these, I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing. Um, you can see that it's a color work sweater, although the color is really popping on my camera. Far more than the colors really are because it's, it's a, a coral and a bright pink. Seems to be coming off more of an orange on the camera, but uh, cameras seem to do that. This is a pattern that I made probably 12 or 13, 14 years ago. It's been a long time uh, since I made this sweater. And I made this out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Sport. It was a pattern that was from a knitting magazine 
I don't have the magazine any longer. Uh, long gone, I've really cleared out a lot of the uh, the paper resources that I have because everything can be found on Ravelry and I have moved uh, quite a few times in the last 15 years. And when you move, you you have to unload certain things and those were some of the things to go. Um, but it's a very simple color work sweater. The one thing it doesn't have that I wish it did have were short rows. I really like what short rows do to a sweater in that they elongate the the back of the neck so the front doesn't kind of pop up and bother you because sometimes when there's no short rows I find that I feel like I'm, I'm being choked uh, by the front of the sweater but this one thankfully has a bit of a relaxed neckline so um so that doesn't happen too often but it's a long sweater I usually make my sweaters very long because um I'm tall and I just find that is more comfortable for me and it also keeps me warmer. Uh, so it's got color work all on the yoke. Um, it also has color work on the ends of the sleeves and I'm gonna have to lift it up because it is really long. Um, it has color work at the bottom of the sweater and it has a nice amount of ease. It also has a lot of pills on it, but I wear my sweaters. They don't sit on display. They don't just sit in the cupboard. My sweaters get worn to the point where I wear them out and I don't actually have anywhere near the amount of sweaters that I've knit in my lifetime because so many of them have simply just been worn out and I've had to get rid of them. And when I say wear out, I mean darning wouldn't do it. They're done and um, they've lived a great life and it's time to put them, put them, put, put them to sleep, so to speak. Um, but this one was at the was at the family cottage and it kind of matches my ski jacket. So I brought it back hoping to do some skiing. But with all the warm weather that we're having, a lot of the winter sports um, are just out of commission. Usually we can almost be skiing into May, both cross country and downhill. But we're at that point where unless we get some more snow, that's not going to happen. But I'm very happy to have the sweater here. I love this sweater. It's very comfortable and uh, the colors really pop on the on the gray. So I'm really happy to have it here. So sock tubes. So I let's talk about the yarn first. So I have made, I would say probably 40, 50 pairs of hand knit socks um, in the last 25 years. I've I really enjoy making socks. They can be wonderful projects for the summer because you don't have all of that hot wool sitting on your lap if you're making, you know, a big sweater. So they're really a, a wonderful grab and grow, um, grab, grab and grow, no, grab and go uh, knitting item. Um, but I have a circular sock machine. So what I did while I was in, um, the Ottawa area, which is uh, is where um, what what's the the biggest city closest to our our family cottage, um, is I spent um, a half a day just making some sock sock tubes with the intention of bringing them back up to where I am in Quebec, and making the heels and the toes in contrasting color. The other thing I that really excited me about these sock tubes was. Normally, over the 25 years that I've been making socks, I've usually had more of an economy yarn. Um, I've knit a lot of Croix socks, a lot of uh, socks that I've gotten on uh, bargain deals. So not necessarily my choice uh, of yarn, but they've all been super hard wearing and very utilitarian. But uh, last summer, when I was visiting a fabric store, they had carried some really nice high-end yarns. And they hadn't found that they had sold very well, probably because they were mostly a fabric store. But they had them on at a fantastic sale. So one of the, the yarns that I, that I grabbed um, is by Celtic Raven Fibers. This is what their label looks like. And I apologize for the, the writing being backwards. 
I have yet to figure out how to reverse that. I'm I'm not somebody who's super tech technical, uh, but um, but this is what their label looks like, and they are hand dyed in Nova Scotia, so Canadian, which is wonderful. It's always nice to support your own country. And this yarn is a super wash sock yarn. It is 80% blue faced luster and 90% nylon. And it also came in one big skein or ball with 115 grams on it. And I don't find that sock yarn is usually in a 115. I find it it's in a 100. So very, very generous. But this was a $40 skein. That is not something I would normally purchase. Uh, I, I, I tend to be very much a bargain hunter. My mother taught me well. Uh, she left me with this. And it's something that once it's a part of yourself, it's hard to let go of that. So I'm always looking for something that's on sale. Um, and good quality, of course, as well. That's important. So my curiosity was, was more about what, how would this expensive sock yarn feel and wear in comparison to the utilitarian type yarns that I was purchasing. And don't get me wrong, I love them. I wear those socks all the time. They're really hard wearing. Um, but I, I was definitely curious and just to let you know, this yarn was 75% off. So I got to the cash register and I was basically spending about $10 a skein for a pair of socks. So I was um, definitely willing to give this a try and do a bit of a comparison. So on the circular sock machine, um, I made a tube, I checked my gauge and I made a tube and I did what's called a folded hem. So this hem is something that's uh, folded over, so it's it's knit double. And I really like it. I find it stays on my foot just as well as any ribbing ever has. In fact, maybe even a little bit better. So um, really en enjoy that. And then what I, what I was doing yesterday on Saturday, um, I was knitting the toes. So what I'm doing right now is I'm knitting all the toes. And I'm finding that this is really relaxing. It's, it's knitting that gives you, a, you feel like you have a purpose, but you get a result really quickly. It doesn't take me very long to do a toe. And it's kind of nice to just sit down with a little bit of time and produce something that you have finished. It feels really good because as knitters, we're sometimes used to making projects that take two, three months, hours, and hours of work, and have that that type of quick result. It just it's a really great feel good situation. So one of the things I'm super um, enjoying is the contrast. Choosing the contrast colors. It, this is fun. Um, I will be doing the heels, but I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm working on the just toe part. And this yarn here, um, sorry about the backward writing again, it's called Active. Um, this is from the United States, and they also sell um, sock yarn for sock machines on cones. And this is a 7525 uh, super wash sock yarn. And it is... Um, very squishy, really nice and uh, cozy. And I chose the yellow because I thought the blips of yellow just went super well with the little blips of yellow that are in the sock. So um, I finished this one, uh, the toes for both, and I will look at doing the heels later on. Um, I am doing a rounded toe and the toe recipe for for this, I will I will put in the show notes, but it is a recipe by Knits in Pieces, and it's in one of their videos uh, show notes. So I will I will link that so that if you're interested, you can take a look at that. 
Um, I didn't use the Kitchener stitch to, to finish off the end of the toe for the first time in my life. I've always used the Kitchener stitch uh, for as long as I can remember. But this time I used what is called the Finchley stitch. So are, those are my dogs. Um, I've got the door closed, but I can still hear them. I, I hope it's not too loud. Um, so the Finchley stitch is an easier version of the Kitchener stitch. It seems to be easier to memorize because I've, I've nailed it. I don't need to look at any instructions or video. Um, I've just got it in my head and, and I seem to be really good to go now with, with that. I will link a video for that as well. Um, one of the, the hosts of Knits and Pieces, her name is Kelly and she does a tutorial for the, the Finchley and I found that really easy to follow. So I'll, I'll link that in the show notes as well. So I've got those toes finished. I did a pair in the same yarn, but a different colorway. And this one is in this gorgeous blue with pinky purple pops. And I am choosing to make the toe in this gorgeous purple. So uh, I just started that pair and I made, I did a lot of experimenting. I made this pair 10 rows longer on my circular sock machine than the green and yellow pair. And then the last pair that I have uh, to work on, and I haven't started this one yet, I made these even 10 stitches longer than the blue one. And I think what I'm gonna do for this one, I'm going to do a gray. And this gray, interestingly enough, I found at our local, I was going to say grocery store, but it was, um, it was like a pharmacy type place. And when you're in small towns, interestingly enough, uh, you can actually find yarn occasionally on the shelves in little stores. Um, people tend to craft a lot more in small towns, I think. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it was just on the shelf. And I knew that uh, that would be a great contrasting contrasting color for, now I'm upside down as well as backwards, um, that would be a great contrast color for, for a pair of socks and I think I'm going to really like that combination. So that's my, my, sock, um, my sock knitting adventures. Um, another thing that I have done with my circular sock machine is made headbands. And headbands can be really fantastic if you're just running to the grocery store but it's cold outside and you don't wanna freeze your ears off. Um, so I didn't make all of these the last time um, I was at the family cottage, but um, I do have them all ready to go. Um, I'm going to be putting those together and making headbands. As you can see, there's a pile of them. I don't know how many there are but it just goes on and on and on in all the different colors. And um, what I did on my circular sock machine for this was I did what's called a false ribbing where I left out every six needle. So it just kind of skips it, but it makes it look like there's a purl row and it kind of gives it a nice little squishy stretchiness um, that, that makes it really, really comfortable on your head. You don't want to do a tight, tight gauge with something um, that you want stretch with and you want it to be soft on your head. Um, so that's another thing I can work on periodically, uh, just when I feel like a little small project, a little bit of a break from, from some of the larger things I've been working on. Uh, so I have been making some progress on the bigger sweater projects that I've been working on. Um, in my last video, I talked a lot about a project called the Stars of Barbro, and that would be episode three. And I have spent quite a bit more time on this, and I am now through all of the color work, which I'm in love with. I just I love this sweater. I think it's uh, such a gorgeous pattern. It's on Ravelry. It's a paid pattern. 
and I'm knitting my way down through the body. And this is in Plutolope, and it is an unspun yarn. It is one of the more economical unspun yarns, I believe. And I just love how it feels. It's really rustic, but I don't find it scratchy. And I even saw a podcast recently, I think it was called Yarn Chaos. She had made a ranunculus with a strand of plutilope and a strand of mohair. And she was wearing it right next to skin without any difficulty. So I guess it depends on what you're used to. But um, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I always wear something under my sweaters. It's just more my habit. But uh, I can't wait to get this done. I'm now in the boring part. So I, I do find that harder for me to get through. I'm a knitter who, who likes challenges. And when I'm doing a yoke, I find I fly through that because my interest is, is definitely tweaked. But when it comes to all of this stocking it, I find that is where I lose interest. So a little bit of a struggle to keep going and right now I've got two sweaters at the same the same spot. This one is all the stocking at part. And another update. Um, the other sweater I showed you last time being my ranunculus, which I decided to do because I was really curious why everybody was making this sweater. It's probably the most viewed, most made sweater on Ravel Ravelry to date. And I just really wanted to know why, you know, why, why, why are everybody, why is everybody and their brother and sister making this sweater? Um, so I have finished the yoke and I'm really just spending a lot of time um, getting through all of the, it's a bit squished, all of the stockingette stitch. And I have started uh, a sleeve. And I was doing that on DPNs. Uh, they were plastic. I did not like how that was going. So I have switched to my chow goose and I'm basically doing magic loop right now. Um, I did when I got part of the way down. I'm going to bring this closer so you can really see the difference. So when I got part of the way down here, I really wanted to see how that was going to fit. Because this is a pattern that is written more for um, a very oversized bat wing uh, type look and I am not a fan of the bat wing look. That is not for me. Um, having to wear coats and everything up here for most of the year, it just doesn't fit very well under a coat and eh, it's not my favorite style. So I put it on barber cords or in my case pony cords um, so it was off the needle so I could try it on um, but before I did that I washed it and I wanted to see how it was going to bloom because I'm making this with one strand of Holst Super Soft and one strand of the Titicaca and it was really crunchy and I hmm, it wasn't my favorite so I did soak it and it it just bloomed really really well it's so soft it's gorgeous i love the combination uh with the titty caca but here i'm going to show you something um this is the holst down here with the titty caca that has not been washed and it does not look very nice in my opinion it the the stitches don't look like they're the same size it looks kind of crunchy but right here, this is where it's washed. And it's gorgeous. It's so soft. Um, it's just a completely different sweater. So if you've ever been wondering about the whole super soft, um, it really changes when you wash it. And when I say wash, I mean, I mean soak in, in eucalyn. But if you have gone to a store and seen a cake or a cone of that, I wouldn't be dissuaded from the way it looks uh, because it is very crunchy and ropey. It's never been washed. It still has all the spinning oil in it. And when it does get a chance to be washed, it blooms 
it softens up. Um, you really, it really becomes beautiful. So I think I should be a spokesperson for them. I just ordered some more online, so <laughs> I'm gonna have quite quite a selection of this yarn. I, um, I, I just really enjoy it. The price point is fantastic. Uh, you get a lot for your money. And I order directly from the store in Denmark and I've never had any trouble with it being shipped to me. And I'm in a very rural part of Canada and never have I had a problem. So that's my ranunculus. Again, I'm still sort of slogging through uh, finishing these two sweaters up. And I also um, have an update on my botanical shawl. So this is another project I, I've shown before. I've been working on this botanical shawl for quite some time. And I've run into kind of a, a decision making time. So it goes right down to the bottom here with the purple. Uh, if you want more information about this, um, I did talk about it uh, a lot in a lot more detail uh, in an earlier episode. Uh, this is made out of the Zauber Ball by Schopel and it is a whole scarn super soft, the cream. So I have done all of the repeats, uh, 18 in fact, and it's not big enough yet. It's definitely not big enough to to wrap around. It's getting there, um, but I but I really have to make a decision on on how I'm going to go about uh, finishing this. In fact, I even thought of ripping the whole thing out and starting again, and doing every other increase so I would get more of a scarf that would that would wrap around. I want to make sure that this is going to be wearable. That's my biggest concern um, because as I increase uh, to do the border, which is what comes next, um, it is only going to keep getting wider. And I'm not sure that I want it to be too much wider because again, I want to make sure that this is going to be wearable and I love it so much. I love the colors of the Zauber ball. That is just fantastic. Um, I only have about 23 grams of the colorway left and I know that the border uses the, the, the two colors evenly and alternately. So I'm not sure how much that's going to get me in terms of more length. I don't want to run out of the color, but yet I don't want to not include it. So I've had thoughts of maybe doing the color instead of doing two plain two color maybe I'll do four plain two color to try to stretch out my color and get as much as I can from it um yeah I kind of I kind of decided to put this on hold until I was sure what I was going to do with it I also had thoughts of ripping it back to about where I would have 50 grams of the Zauber ball so that I could backtrack at that point and just decrease, do the reverse to the increases and decrease and that way get more of a scarfy type thing rather than a very, very wide shawl. I'm not sure how far I'd have to rip back on that though. Hard to rip back and make that decision. So I'm still thinking about it. I don't know if you guys have any ideas. I'd love to hear them. Love the project. It's just fantastic. But it's uh, it's hard to rip back when you've put that much work into it. So so we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll we'll see what I decide. So that brings me to um, what's next. So one of the things for 2023 that I've really wanted to do is to try to use up more of the yarn that I have rather than buy more. And one of the things that I saw in Ravel recently that I really liked is a pattern called Wild Posy. And it's a little bit like the ranunculus um, in that it is one color and texture. 
I have a lot of color work sweaters. It is my favorite technique in knitting. I am like a magpie when it comes to choosing colors and getting vibrancy in my clothing. But I'm also realizing that I could use some one color sweaters and those would be wonderful to wear with my vibrant shawls. And the textured sweaters I love, they're beautiful. So I started taking a look at my stash and I had this, um, this, uh, the light went on and I decided that if I were to make the biggest dent in my stash, the thing I should use up first are my bulkier weight yarns. And I was thinking of buying more Plutilope for this wild posy sweater because I really liked the Plutilope but I need to use up the stash. I really do need to shop at, in my own store. So I have a couple of yarns that fall into that category and they take up a lot of space because they're, they're bulky. So the first one that I have that falls into that category is uh, this very sort of beigey peach uh, yarn. Um, it is called Melange Wool by, I don't know who, Car Cartopu? Uh, I know I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, this comes in 100 uh, gram balls. I have more than enough for a sweater. And it is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. It is made in Turkey. I find yarns from Turkey tend to be really nice quality. And it would fall into the the Aran uh, type category. Uh, so, um, and it's got a, a two ply going on there. So I, um, I thought uh, that might be a possibility for um, a more bulky type sweater. But I also have, and this is still in a sealed bag, so I think I'm just gonna keep it as is. I also have this, I wouldn't call, it's not striping, it's not really variegated, it's just got a mix of colors in the yarn. It's called Patton's Misty. And it has a really interesting combination um, in its makeup. It is 48% acrylic, 32% nylon, 10% wool, and 10% mohair. So I think this might be really beautiful. It's got like a lilac color in there and a peach and a gray, and it's really beautiful. And I've had both of these for, oh, probably five years, maybe. Four or five years, I, I picked them both up at a store called Wool Time that's in Ottawa. And this store does a very large tent sale in August for about 10 days in August. And the deals are phenomenal. They will have a lot of uh, commercial yarn, but very often they also have uh, some higher end yarn that is discontinued that they'll sell off in this sale. So even though I don't need to go to the sale, I often go to the sale. Um, try to limit myself to how much more I'm adding to my stash. But uh, this is where I got these two. And when I was looking at them, again, I was thinking of the wild posy sweater. But there is a wonderful place um, to get some great patterns um, as well that are free from a site um, called Drops, and I'm they, they have their own yarn line, so I'm sure you've probably heard of them. Drops Air is really popular, but they're on Ravelry too, so you can look up sweaters um, under the name of Drops, and they have such a wealth of patterns um, that are all free and available. So I definitely purchase patterns, there's no doubt about that, but... You know, sometimes it is nice to find one um, that isn't going to break the bank. And 
I can definitely say that there was a time where I always looked for the free patterns because purchasing them um, with when I had young children, it just, you know, it was something I, I couldn't do. And we're not all able to be purchasing every month a couple of paid for patterns. So if you're looking for really interesting, um, stylish patterns for all different weights of yarn, Drops is a great place to look. So while I was looking, I, I found three patterns that really interested me and I'll, I'll show them to you now. There's just little pictures at the top of each page. So, so this one is called uh, Snow Tracks and it's got um, some fantastic cabling going on in there uh, with some, some lace down the middle, a big turtleneck, that is something that you don't have to do. It, it could be a choice, but I really liked that one as a possibility for, for these yarns that would make a, a good dent um, area in my yarn stash if I was to use them. Um, another one I found that kind of reminded me of the, I think it's called the Magnolia. Um, this one is called Autumn Wreath. Uh, I don't know with, there we go. Okay, so it's got some really nice lace work going on in that pattern. Uh, I thought that one was a really pretty one. And then the last one that I found that, that I really liked is one, it kind of had a like a sweatshirty feel. It's called Climbing Ivy. And it's got some cables uh, going down, um, the increase line and down the side uh, under the arm. So I really like that one too. So I'm not sure which ones I'm going to be looking at for this yarn, but I but I do know that I want to try to use it up, um, make good use of it. Uh, this yarn is not heavy, so these sweaters are not going to feel super heavy. They're very very light. Uh, yarns the second one i showed you i think is even one of those where they 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 blow the yarn into a nylon tube so it's very very light and airy so um that's something that i'm that i'm looking at, at doing in the future um speaking of future projects um i have another little little gem over here i since i made my my stripey sweater um I have fallen in love with striped sweaters and I also thought that I might do more of a color blocked striped sweater and with my ranunculus the first time using the titty caca um, I really fell in love with that and I will have a lot of that titty caca used over um, left over sorry to be used up and I have this little combination of colors in Titicaca. So I thought I could use these um, with whole super soft and I have tons of it. So this one being rosebud, I could I could pair with this one right here and then I'll find colors that go well with these two other ones. And I might do a color block with those and those two yarns together would come off as kind of like a, a DK weight. So, um, that wouldn't take quite as long as my fingering weight striped sweater that I that I recently did. And uh, I find this this titty caca, which is alpaca, to be so, so soft. I, I really, uh, really like it. So that's something that's that's on the agenda. Oh, and the last thing I want to I want to share are a couple of books. So in my first video, I mentioned Sitzel Hoyevik because I did the, the Forest Star jacket. Um, and I actually am working on another project of hers. I'll maybe share that in, in an upcoming project. But uh, the book um, that, that that project comes from and uh, many, many others are, are in her published book called um, my Best Knitting Treasures. This book has so many patterns in it um, that it is well worth purchasing. If you like color work, you like 
jackets, although there are some wonderful sweaters in here as well. Um, but it just has an enormous amount of patterns in it, and they're all something that I would want to do. Sometimes when you when you get a book, um, it can be that there's only just one pattern that interests you, and that can be a bit of a, a hard sell to buy a whole book for one pattern that's not available as just a pattern on Ravelry, because sometimes that's the case. They're, they're just published in, in books. But uh, this is a book that I know that I'm going to keep going back to um, many, many projects that I'll, that I'll make in the future with, with this. And just, it's just, it's a coffee table book. I could just look at it all day. It's fabulous. Um, so I wanted to mention that, but I also uh, have a, a really recent purchase that I'm very excited about. Um, I can't remember where I first saw this book, but it caught my eye right away. And it was one of those where I knew, okay, I'm making that and I'm buying that book. So first off, um, I, I have done a lot of crochet in my life. And I think I'm definitely in a future podcast, maybe even the next one, I'm going to focus it on my crochet um, decade. I will explain that. There's a story to that um, that you might find interesting. But even though 99% of my knitting uh, or my project work is knitting these days, I still really like to go to crochet once in a while, like every eight to 10 projects. I'll do some crochet. It's a nice little break. It's a change to the muscle groups that are used in your hands, your wrists, and your arms, which can be a really good thing too. Um, and there's certain things you can do with crochet that you can't do with knitting and vice versa. So my recent purchase um, is this gorgeous book called uh, Colorful Crochet Knitwear. And what really, really grabbed my eye was this project right here. I knew right away when I saw that I'm making that hands down. That is something I'm going to love. I'm going to wear it. Um, and I think what I'm going to do when I make that sweater is I'm going to use the Holst Coast, which is a merino cotton mix because I really would like to have some more sweaters that I can wear in spring and fall. Um, in the areas where I live, you don't wear sweaters in the summer. It, it just is not a thing. It's too hot. It's too humid. Um, even when you're wearing a t-shirt, chances are you're changing it through the day because it's just not, uh, you just need something to freshen up with. Um, but for spring and summer, I just felt like this one in a merino cotton, sorry, spring and fall, um, would be wonderful. So I have that, um, probably for this summer, maybe, um, my daughter and I were, were talking about this sweater and she seemed to think she wanted to do it too, although she'd probably do a cropped version. Um, I will definitely do a long version. Um, but that was one that caught my eye. There are so many others. This one was another one that caught my eye. And I thought, yeah, I'd really like to do that. That, that one is um, beautiful too. So again, that's Colorful Crochet Knitwear. And I think it's been out since 2022. So it, it's not one that's been new on the market, but... Um, Here's another one that's beautiful. I'll try to keep the pattern off the screen. Okay, so there's another one, a little jacket. Um, if I if I was to make that, what I would do with it uh, is make it much longer. But this tapestry look, uh, I just love that. That's to die for. There's also a color work um, one in here that is that is super cute. I don't know if I, oh yeah, there's a full page picture. So I'll just show you that one as well. So I thought this one was really cute too. And you could really adapt it uh, to any length that you felt would, would suit. But that, yeah, I just, uh, 
I just find that both knitting and crocheting in the last uh, few years is expanding by leaps and bounds with the techniques and the possibilities. When I was knitting as a kid, uh, up until maybe in my early 30s, things didn't seem to change very much. It was very much the same techniques all the time, the finishing, you always did rib at the bottom, you went down a needle. I've talked about that before. I don't like it. Um, but the, the world of knitting and crocheting is expanding so quickly and there's so much to learn and so many ways to adapt to make a better shape for your body. And I'm finding this so interesting um, and enjoyable after having knit the same way for 25 years. So um, I'm looking forward to that very, very much. So I'm going to leave it there for today and I'm going to get back to knitting, knitting my toes on my sock tubes and trying to get my ranunculus finished and my stars of Barbro finished. Um, I hope you um, are enjoying your knitting as much as I am. If you are enjoying my content, um, please like and subscribe. That really helps the channel. And I Wish you a wonderful day and lots of happy knitting. Take care and stay well. Be happy. Bye-bye.